Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve majority element, lead code number 169. So we're given an array of nums of size n, and we need to return the majority element. So the majority element is the element that appears more than n over two times. And this little symbol here is the floor, so round it down. So you may assume that the majority element always exists in the array. So the examples are pretty clear. If you have three, two, three, then the majority element is three. And if you have two, two, one, 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 two, two. Well, there's four twos and there's three ones. The majority element would be two. Okay, let's use this example here. So we can see we have five twos here and there's nine many elements. So we have two appearing in over half of the array positions. Therefore, it is the majority element and what we'd return. Now, the first solution that comes to mind is building up a hash map where basically you would have the key as the number. So we'd have three and then the value is the number of those occurrences. So there's two threes. So of the threes, we have two of those. You could go through the entire array and accumulate that you have for twos, you have five of those, and for ones, you have two of those. Now, clearly the majority element is gonna be the one that has the highest frequency. So you could basically create this hash map in O of n time, and then you could get the maximum frequency in O of n time, and then you just return that corresponding number. So that is going to take a time complexity of big O of n, and the space complexity of this is also going to be big O of n because we store the hash map. So let's write that code solution first. Now, if you're familiar with Python counters, feel free to use that. Otherwise, we'll use the base hash map solution. So just an empty dictionary we're calling counter. And then for each num in the nums array, if that num is already in the counter, so if it's a key in that hash map, then we'd set counter at the num to go up by one. And if the number is not in the counter, aka the else, then we'd set it. So counter at num is equal to one, meaning that we have not seen this before. So we'll say that we have one of these. Okay, after this, our counter would be completed and we'll initialize two variables basically to dummy values. We'll set max count equal to negative one so far and same thing with the answer. So max count is going to go and find the highest frequency and answer will be the number that's gonna be associated with the max count. Okay, then we can loop through the dictionary. So for each key and value in the counter dot items that loops through the key value pairs, if the value is greater than the max count that we've seen so far, then you'd want max count to be that value and you have an updated answer so far. So we'll set answer equal to the key. So after this thing runs, we're going to have max count as the highest value and we'll have answer as that key that's associated with the max count. So that after this runs here, you can simply just return your answer. So this is going to work and the time complexity of this would be big O of N. The space complexity is also going to be big O of N. So if we were to submit that, that is going to work, but we can get a better solution than this. Okay, so the idea is to so far have a candidate, which I'll just call answer like we did before. And that's going to be initialized to whatever, we'll say negative one. And we're also going to have a variable called count, which is going to be initialized to zero. Now we'll loop through the array from the beginning. So we'll start at the three first. And we basically ask these two questions in order. Firstly, is our count equal to zero? Yes, it is. And because the count is zero, that means we're going to update our answer to the number we're currently looking at. So answer is going to be set to three. The second question is, is our current number matching what our answer is? Yes, actually it is. And therefore we're going to increase the count. So we basically say we have one count. It's kind of like a tally for this potential answer that we have. Okay, and we keep following that rule here. So we go through and we see a two. Okay, well, our count is not zero, so we're not going to update our answer. However, this current number of two does not match our answer. And so when that happens, we actually decrement the count. So this count is going to go down to zero. That's going to cause this to happen. When we look at the next number, we ask the question, is our count equal to zero? Yes, it is. And so when that happens, you update your answer to be your current number which is going to be one. Now, whenever we update our answer, these two things are always going to match. And so our count is going to be equal to one. Okay, we move this over here. The count is not zero, so we don't update the answer. And this actually matches our current answer. So the count is actually going to go up to two. You can see our algorithm is kind of trying to suggest that one is looking like a good candidate so far. Okay, then we'll look at the next number here and we see two. Okay, well, the count is not zero. We don't update answer 
but these mismatch and so our count is going to go back down to one. When we move this over, we see that our count is not zero, so we don't update our answer, but they are mismatching and so their count is going to go back down to zero. This means that next time when we go over here, our answer is actually going to be set to our current number and so it's going to be set to two. You can see we basically just lost our ability to think it was one because we saw three twos in a row here. And so we will get a count is equal to one. When we move over here, our count is equal to one and so our answer does not match. We are going to set our count equal to zero, which actually makes it over here. That will actually cause our answer to basically be reset to this last number, which happens to be two. And that's gonna end with a count of one. And ultimately you would return our answer. So why the heck does this algorithm work? It's really weird, isn't it? I handpicked this example because I think it's very interesting to see that basically all the stuff that we did up to this point, it really didn't matter. It ended up just getting set to this last number here. Now, while that's not always the case, it shows the intuition. If you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements here, well, if you didn't find the majority element here, then that means that it must be over here. And since there's only one element here, it's actually going to be set to that number. So if there was actually a three here, well, then it would have to be three. But that doesn't work because that's an invalid example. Because you know that the majority element exists here, there is a number in the array that occurs in over half of the array's positions. If you've looked at all of this stuff here and you didn't find it, then it's got to be over here. Same thing if it was a different example, like it was a bunch of twos over here. So we'll say twos over here. Well, if you did find it over here, which you would, if you look in over half the array's positions here, well, then the count's actually going to be so high here that you actually can't get it away from being two. Even if all of these were ones, for example, it's already been found at this point, And so your answer would still be two. Okay, so the idea is to set our answer equal to any initialization. We'll just say negative one. And the count is currently equal to zero. Then we're going to do exactly what we said. For each number in the numbers array, first thing you do is if the count is ever equal to zero, we're going to update our answer to be the current number. Now, regardless of whether that happened or not, if the answer is equal to our number, then the count is going to go up by one. So if they are matching, then we have basically more proof that that is our actual answer. And otherwise, if that's not true, then count is actually going to be decremented. So it will go down by one. If we didn't match, we basically lost proof that that was the majority element. Okay, and after this is true here, you will actually have set answer to be the correct element. And so you can just return your answer. This is going to work in a time complexity of big O of N. And you can see we're not storing anything at all. This has a space of big O of one. If you were to submit this, this is going to work. And I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye-bye.